My name is uh, Jeffrey Smith, and I am a graphic designer here in Seattle. I work with a lot of people in the restaurant industry, so I end up shooting a lot of uh, food porn. One of my favorite quotes here, and that's kind of why I'm here, I want to share some tips on how to make it better for you and your camera. Uh, food porn, everyone's doing it. Uh, chefs, writers, bloggers, uh, understaffed magazines are sending out their writers with point-and-shoot cameras and having them bring back photos. And it's not working out so good. Uh, I see a lot of crimes being committed in the foodborne arena. But here's some of my work here. Uh, and it's all uh, shot uh, in the wild at the restaurant during service with a camera. Uh, you don't really need any special, any special equipment at all. Uh, what you want to do is you want to avoid what I call uh, hardcore food porn. And uh, this is the, uh, the dirty, nasty, seedy underbelly of food porn. A couple of these were shot by a, a food writer, one by a chef. I think the uh, bottom right is actually a, a home surgery disaster or something. Uh, they all have something in common. They all are, are afflicted with low light, uh, specular light, white balance, and flash. These are kind of what I call the, uh, the four horsemen of the food porn apocalypse, which actually is happening this Saturday, so you want to get ready for that. Uh, one thing I'm not going to talk about is cameras. Uh, any camera will work. I do tend to shoot with the DSLR. A Nikon D, uh, D300, it's a great camera, but you can use an iPhone if you want. Just don't use the uh, hipstamatic Kung Fu Grip 70s filter, and you should be okay with that. Uh, so the first thing is low light. That's the biggest enemy of food porn. If you walk into a restaurant and there's no light available, ask yourself one question. Do I really need to document everything that goes into my pie hole? Uh, if the answer is yes, and often it is for me, uh, I suggest finding a table by the window. This is the best thing you can do. Get as close to that window as you possibly can, and your food porn is going to get better and better. Uh, this uh, window shot here is uh, from a restaurant in West Seattle called Spring Hill. Uh, I went in there, and uh, Chef Mark Fuller put down some food right in front of me. Uh, I lined it up, got my camera out, shot the photo. Pretty easy, nothing to it. That window of light is, is, is the biggest friend here in the situation. Uh, one thing I did have to do is look up. Uh, if you look up in a restaurant, you're going to find that all restaurants have halogen lighting or Edison bulbs or what I call specular light, really hard points of uh, concentrated light. And these are actually a big enemy of food porn. These are going to get into your shot. They're going to reflect on all of the surfaces. Uh, the specular light's going to get into your sauce. It's going to get into the surface of the food itself. It's going to create these little hard points of light everywhere. And it's also going to mix up your natural light from the window with the uh, warm light of the tungsten. And it's going to screw things up royal. So what you want to do is you want to diffuse the light. And in this case, really what you want to do is block the halogen. So grab a menu or grab a plate, use your hand, put something between that halogen light and your plate and let the diffuse light from the window take over and that'll give you some success. Uh, next thing to think about, which is often ignored in, uh, in food porn, is uh, white balance. White balance is really important, especially if you're a chef and you're uh, shooting food uh, in, on the line with fluorescent lighting. You're going to get those uh, yellow cast photos or green cast photos. Uh, you can do this in the camera or you can do it in post. I really recommend shooting in the raw format and then bring your photo quickly into iPhoto or I use Adobe Lightroom uh, and then just adjust your white balance there. You don't want a green photo. You don't want a yellow photo. There's a lot of yellow photos on the Internet and they are terrible. Finally, there is the flash. The on-camera flash is the biggest enemy of food porn. I love shooting with the off-camera strobes. It's great fun. But when it comes to food, you just want to turn off the flash altogether. It's, a, it's another really small, concentrated point of light. And it's right up next to your plate. And it's throwing huge washes of light at your food. It's casting dark shadows. Uh, the food looks kind of like it's a mug shot. It's kind of creepy looking. So as you can see, one, one here is shot with, uh, with the flash, one without. And of course, one of those is better than the other. Uh, so to review here, you want to find a window, uh, you want to diffuse the light, or in my case, block the halogen light. You want to check out your white balance, play around with that a little bit, it's really important, you don't want a yellow photo. And get rid of the flash altogether, you will only fail miserably using your flash shooting food. Uh, one other thing you can do, especially if you have an automa or a manual camera, is uh, shoot an aperture priority mode, it's, it's very helpful. Open up your aperture to the widest it can get, that's usually the lowest number, uh, 1.8, 2.8, uh, let in lots of light. It gives you a nice little bit of selective focus with your photos, so part of the photo's in focus, part of it's out. Looks real great with food porn. Another thing you can do is get a good lens. I shot the entirety of this cookbook uh, with two lenses that total less than $400. One was used, of course, but a uh, simple prime lens. You don't need to zoom. You're already at the table. You can't get any closer. Simple lens with a big aperture. Uh, it's going to give you great, great shots with food. Uh, I'd like to thank Spring Hill for letting me uh, shoot bad photos of their great food. And you can find uh, more photos on my website and my Flickr page and... Thank you.